let's do a little splitting demo, Jeff. You want me to do that? Sure. Okay. Here's a, I'll let you split the front section, please. So when I'm splitting, the first thing I'm doing is, you got the check split in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight across perpendicular to that check split. Now, now notice how he's holding the comb. That, that's the best way to hold it. you got a good I use I use my feet and my knees, and I use body English, which you'll see in a second. But I mean, I really, you know, it's, it's a whole body kind of thing. And I, get, I just get away from benches and knives and all that other stuff. Step on that button again. So uh, I'm going to, just like when Harry put the check split in, it's very important to keep your blade uh, perpendicular, 90 degrees, to the comb. So I'm not going to cut in like that or like this. I want that thing straight there. And I'm going to go straight across on that check split. I use my Mark, I, Mark 1 eyeball, which is my left eyeball. My right's my Mark 2. It's not as good. Okay. First version is always better. And I get that sucker on there and give it a split. Can I twist this blade? Is that right? Yeah, you can twist the heck out of that. What I do is I take this. Usually this node wouldn't be here. I'd have this cut off. So one quick twist, and then I want to split it down to the first node with the knife. That's that's how I do it. See, I'm just going to twist that until that first node pops. But he's twisting this blade this way, not this way. Right. Okay. It's this mode. You could also, besides a twisting, you could also keep hammering that blade down to the first note. I just, I'm real uncomfortable about hammering knives towards my hands or my fingers or whatever. <laughs> so, so I'd much rather just get it started and then twist like that. But some people, it, some people do struggle. A lot of my students have struggled with getting, especially on a butt comb like this. Take some hand strength. You got to have some strength in, in your wrist and form. So now that it's past this first node, which typically would be down here to have more leverage, now I'm going to still I'm gonna hold that comb down with my feet and legs. And I'm going to pull with even pressure. And I'm going to split. My first splits are always fast and not very controlled. Just you ready? Mm -hmm. You're watching? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll show you that one. That's it. That's it. <laughs> this is it. I'm going to teach you the easiest way to ever split and get rid of all this other struggle stuff. Once you see this and practice this, you'll be able to split combs into. I, I, in demonstrations, I split hey, combs so thin I don't use strips. Well, I can split a strip down. I can take a 200,000 strip, that strip that weighs 0.200, and it's split it in half completely evenly. Yeah, I started to say, my first call, I split that. I'm talking about the same measurement from end to end, not the run out. Not the run out. All right, so now I've got two even halves. I'm going to go back. And here's where, this is kind of, I'll teach you how I do this. I like to, when I'm, when I'm eyeballing the half, and this <coughs> one actually is better than an angle. I don't think you did that. I'm not trying to follow that original square, remember? This is the only step that's kind of weird that you got to remember is that uh, when, I'm, when I'm eyeballing it at half, because I'm looking at it, I'm looking at a half moon shape, a half circle. It's hard to find the middle of a half circle if you're on the outside of this one. It's easier this way because here I've got my knife, you know, right on this circle. On here, I'm splitting that circle in half. It's really easy to figure out the distance. Yeah. This is a center mesh rule. Okay. How's that work? Okay. You put this here and you make sure the measurements on each side. Are exactly the same. Then you cut on this on the center line. Okay. I made these. All right. I bought a metal one. Can I have that one? Yeah. <laughs> All you gotta do is ask. <laughs> Don't get mad. You should ask first. I <laughs> brought a bunch of. I started saying, "Gee, where you bring one?" I think I did. That's kind of neat. I'm gonna I'm gonna use all my wife's dress. Okay. Okay. I got some more down here somewhere. We'll get to them later. So that's I'm gonna learn how to use. It. I'm gonna use that. But for now, I'm gonna not use that because I usually don't use it. What I do is I take my eyeball again, stick that sucker right what I think is in the middle, and I'm looking on the inside. Again, I'm keeping it completely perpendicular. 
So you're splitting that half in half. You're I'm going to keep going in halves. Okay. I'm pretty much going to keep going in halves. Sometimes on some columns, I might have to go a third. But right now, I'm not worried about that. Um, I'll teach you a little different technique later. I'm going to pop it, pop that first note, and again, now I'm going to pull. And now, now that I'm starting to get into smaller, you know, not the whole column, I'm going to start worrying about how much I'm controlling this. And I want to pull on equal pressure. Because I know that the split right now, I know, is right in the middle. It hasn't walked to the left or the right. I know it's right in the middle, so I'm going to pull with equal pressure. And this, again, to go in force, I'm just going to pull apart, and it's pretty much going to go right in half. It's not going to be a big deal. Now, I get down to this point. At this point, you, you don't find it easier to chop the inner. Stop the I'm fixing to do. I come down and whack them off. Whack them off. I use an old bayonet in my shop. I use a hammer. I just kind of film. I got a, a little gouge that's curved. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're working too hard. I like seeing stuff fly across the shop. That's another thing. That's the, I like the hammer. That's my favorite too. I started with the gouge and I gave it up. Now I'm gonna start getting to the point where I'm gonna teach you how to walk the strip. Walk the strip. Get in the middle again. Pop that sucker. Now you'll notice after I find the center, I'm actually turning it, and now I'm looking at the enamel side. The enamel side that helps me be able to see where the split is. You can see the split is this side is a little bit wider than this side, so I'm split a little bit off center. It's harder to see that on the fifth side because there's all this stuff going on and you've got these angles splits. So I, I always I eyeball the center on the fifth side. I do because I don't have any of those. Now I do. And then I turn it and split it towards me. So I'm going to turn this so you guys can see it. So I hold that one up and I'm kind of going to exaggerate. See how my, my skinny side is held straight and I'm pulling the fat side away. Like that. Now it's back to center. Back to center. So that's, that's the whole trick to splitting right there, because you bend the fat side. And doing it with your hands, for me, it's just the easiest thing in the world to doing it with your hands. You've got good hands, you got leverage. A couple other tricks with your hands. you got the meaty part of your, your palms right here at the bottom of your thumb. It's a real strong muscle. You use that as leverage. I'm going to put those meats together and pull like that. If you try to pull like this, you know, you're, you're never going to get it right. You don't have much control pulling like this. This you have control. And I'm just going to stay in front of that split. I'm going to move down almost just above where it's split here. And watch how I use the meaty part. See that? And that didn't, I don't have to have all this muscle energy to pull that. I just take the meaty part of my hands. I move down a little bit. I the meaty bring part. It how easy that was? It's nice and controlled. And I would typically go through the comb and I'd go everything in half, and everything in half, and everything. I wouldn't just work one strip down. A vice. I didn't bring a vice. I either. forgot mine. I, I sit sitting on my bench. I know just where it is. So one more time, eyeball in half. Now, I will stop here. I'll often, I'll take my measurements from my rod. Look. Would you say this is a this is a butt section? So I've got this is a Dickerson 8013. The butt of my rod is 364,364. That's the diameter of the butt section of this rod. So that's the thickest part of the rod on the butt section. Half of that is 182. You all understand that your strip has got to be 182 wide. If you split your strip smaller than 182. You're asking, yeah, you yeah. have a problem. It's not going that right. Right. Yeah. And as you're planing and stuff, you don't even want to split it down to 182. Yeah. You want to, you I don't want to. 60, so 60,000. So 60,000. So let's say we want to go a quarter of an inch. So here's where we need to start looking at our strips at some point is we need to, if we want to get a quarter of an inch, well, we've got 0.85 right now. Let's take it off right. half. So if we split that in half, we're down to 4.2, 4.25. Right. That's, that's still pretty wide. But because this is a butt section, we only need six strips out of it. That's fine. I mean, you can start there, but you're going to have a lot of material. Right? 
you start at 425 and you got to get down to 187, you got a lot of pain. So instead, I might take that, that point, point 0.85, what's that divided by three? About three, three. About a little less. That gets your quarter of an inch. That About gets me there. 300, yeah, that gets your quarter of an inch. So, so, now, now, inch. so now what I'll do is, what was it? Yeah. Point, point 0.85, I'd actually use a calculator because I can't do math in my head. And Okay, I'll go down. I'll go down to 276. See here. Sharp the blue. Because it has a fine point on it. So now I can actually come out on the enamel side and set this. And I can actually mark. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I'm just. So here's a good example. This comb just happens to be one I need to go in thirds for the butt section. You see how I mark those? Now it's going to be real important being able to walk that split. It's going to be real important. So I come back now and let's start. I'm just going to put it on one of those blue lines. It doesn't matter which, but I do still want to stay perpendicular to the enamel. So you see that? I've started right on that blue line. I'm going to come down. I'm going to give it that twist real quick. Okay. Now it's going to be real tough keeping this, this strip here that I've started to split, keeping it at that quarter inch the whole way down. I mean, most people would get it wrong. I did, you know. How many poems do we really? Get out. Until we learned how to do this. So again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab with my hands, I'm gonna use that meaty part again, and I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna hold the skinny one straight up, and I'm gonna pull the fat one away. You see how I'm pulling the fat one away? And I'll use my, my body English. Get through that note. There we go. You can see he's having to put some muscle into it. That's a big yeah. guy. And it's getting skinny. Yeah. It's this comb is bad. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how good it was. Yeah, this comb is bad. This, this comb's no good. <laughs> this piece is blind. It has not had any flaming, so it doesn't split easily. With a little flaming, it splits a little more easily. And that one didn't come out that right. And you know, one thing I did notice looking at this strip now. It seemed like it was a little wider in one end than the other. That's another thing you got to deal with. It causes problems. This one will work pretty simple. This one will work pretty simple. Okay. And again, I'm still, I still got a wider strip here, so I'm going to pull that one off to the left. Bend the fat side. Now it's right back in the middle. And now this side's a little fat, so I'm going to bend that one. Now it's equal, so I just pull with equal pressure, and I'm done. I'll tell you, the, the, when you get to a node, that's where your split's going to mess up. Your split's not going to mess up. It's going to stay where it starts. One of my problems with that, that third that I pulled off. I know. So I got messed up at that node and I had to pull real hard. And I just couldn't control it. And it's a butt section. You need six strips out of this entire piece of bamboo. Yes, we're good. We're, 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 we're in great shape. We're in great shape. We can make two butts out of that rod. Right. So, right. so that's all. So, all right. You guys want to split? So, let me let me show you a little bit different way. Here we go. Okay. Um, no, it's just a little different way. Jeff split it in half, like this. That's roughly half. And then in half again, and then in half again, and then in the third. I would determine that I want to get, if this were a tip section, I want to get two, two tip rods out of this. So how many pieces is that? That's 24. Okay. 
So I'd have to get at least 24 pieces, assuming I don't screw anything up. I'm assuming there's no leaf nodes or yeah, no drawers marks, yeah, there's yeah. no gouges where I my file slip or anything. So I want 28 pieces out of this, not 24. Okay? So in order to get 28 pieces out of this and to have all of my splitting after my initial splitting be in half, because in half is a lot easier than in third, I would mark seven equal marks all the way around. So you measure it and divide by seven? I measure it and divide by seven. And then I'd take a set of dividers, which I didn't bring with me, little two little points, and I'd measure out one seventh and I'd walk all the way around. So that my initial split, I'd get four out of this one and three out of this one. Okay? Let's say, and I'm going to just eyeball this. Yeah. One, two, three, four. This one I'm going to get three out of. But I would have carefully, carefully measured this. <coughs> so then I'd get four out of this one and three out of this one. And this is going to really foul it up. Crash. Glad that wasn't it. Jeff never has anything like this happen because he's a professional rod <laughs> I could say a lot more things live up, but Doug's live up, but Doug's here. Doug's been worked with me for years and years. Um, I can't lie, you've been in the shop too much. <laughs> so well, now I split this one in half. Very carefully. Making sure that sucker is perpendicular. Missed. This is a new hammer. Like I say, I like hammers. I hadn't figured out the heft of that hammer just yet. And this is the way I do mine, rather than just rip it apart. Okay. You can use that to force it too. Show them how you're, which way you're bending it, if, if you're trying to walk a piece. Because you're doing the same thing. You're, you're bending it against the fat side. Right. I usually wear gloves for this, too. And I just go all the way on down. And I'd split this in half. Is it really the first? We're at 61 inches. And you, you, you might, 